Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this lecture we are going to talk about PBR322 vector. Okay, so PBR322 is one of the most widely used plasmid vector. Okay, it's a purposefully built plasmid vector and uh, one of the most widely used one and basically it's a very small plasmid vector of 4 kb long basically 4363 base pair long and uh, it is used mostly due to its remarkable transformation efficiency okay and as the size is small it has a very good transformation efficiency so we use it widely so let's talk about the pvr 322 vector and as we know whenever we discuss about vector cloning vector we always want to talk about uh, the different components of the vector and in this case as it is a, a created it's not a naturally occurring vector we create it so we want to talk about how we created this vector so <clears throat> there are a lot of things mentioned in this particular page i want you to talk about each of them separately so what does this, this pbr322 mean so if i explain that basically based on this is a synthetic vector so based on the uh, the creation date and the place where it is created the researchers who created the vector the name is given actually it is created on 1977 in the laboratory of herbert boyer and the university of california san francisco and the name given pbr p stands for p stands for plasmid okay so pbr p stands for plasmid br stands for Bolivar and Rodriguez, uh, name of the researcher who were working with this uh, particular plasmid and uh, 322 is the number of uh, the plasmid that they have worked with or discovered it because that particular lab uh, was uh, working with multiple plasmids, they are working with 325, uh, uh, 327 and so many different kinds. So among them this one is the 320 uh, seconds. Uh, this is how the nomenclature is given PBR322 okay uh, so this is the very first thing second thing is about the length the length is of 4361 base pair okay and uh, as we know as a cloning vector it must carry a selectable marker and that is an antibiotic resistance gene that act as a selectable marker so in this case the antibiotic resistance gene that is present in the pbr322 is ampicillin resistant marker and tetracycline resistance you can see that in this picture as well this is the picture of the circular plasmid pbr322 and we have ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene and if you look at the this is as a clock like 12 9 6 and 3 then you can see the positioning uh, of both tetracycline and ampicillin resistance is somewhere in this direction of the arrow that i draw right now okay and uh, they also have origin of replication known as pmb1 so this is the origin of replication pmb1 this is where the pmb1 or origin of re replication is in place and then it also has a restrictor region known as rop okay uh, it's also very important that it has this restrictor restrictor site basically what is restrictor region a restricted region or ROP site or ROP site or ROP region is actually present to restrict the number of copy number of the plasmid inside of the cell. So basically inside of a host cell, the number of the plasmid present is known as the copy number of that plasmid. Okay. So normally the this, this plasmids have higher copy numbers. But in this case, uh, we need to maintain maximum 40 as a copy number. So restrict maximum 40 as a copy number inside of the host cell. We use this ROP site. So we, we put this ROP site in this plasmid in order to regulate that. Okay. And uh, so, so, so use this ROP site for that purpose. Uh, so after that, what else we have? We have uh, restri unique restriction sites, 40 restriction sites are present. And you can see this is the tetracycline resistant region and this is where the 40 restriction or RE sites are present which are also known as multiple cloning site MCS multiple cloning site. Now this is under the tetracycline resistance part and actually there are total 40 actually total 40 res uh, restriction endonucleosides are present uh, out of the 40 11 sites are present under this tetracycline region or, or in the promoter it lies within the promoter of the tetracycline resistance gene okay and uh, six key restriction uh, sites are present and uh, inside the ampicillin resistance gene so six in the ampicillin resistant uh, gene and 11 under the promoter of uh, 
uh, tetracycline resistance gene okay not under within the promoter of tetracycline resistance gene so these are the positioning of all this different components and what else what else we need to know we need to know about the selectable marker as i told you that hindi 3 and cla1 within the tetracycline resistant promoter is present somewhere you can see that uh, tetracycline there are hindi 3 cla1 all these are present so this is a part of the tetracycline resistance genes and these two portions are really important eco r1 cla1 and hindi 3 under the tetracycline resistance gene and under the ampicillin resistant we have pst1 and pvu1 among the known type of restriction endonuclease because as i told you there are 40 different kinds of restriction endonuclease sites are present now those 40 are not always useful okay we only use some of them quite often and there are some famous restriction endonuclease sites that eco r1 cla1 hindi 3 pst1 pv1 so that's what we have mentioned here that's what which are pointed in this particular picture and as you can see this is the rob site and inside of the ROP site as well, the, the ROP region or the gene that is coding for that restriction of the number of copy number, there is also a restriction site PVU2 under that. So that, you know, we can disrupt all this gene somewhere. Now, the importance of having restriction sites embedded inside of this target region of the genes is that we can cut those genes and insert a gene of interest. So the moment we insert our gene of interest in any of this, for example, if we cut insert it in the PVU2 site, so it will disrupt the ROP gene. So as a result, the ROP products will not be made. So as a result, the copy number will not be maintained. Okay. Similarly, if we insert something here under this ampicillin resistance uh, section that is PST1, it will disrupt the ampicillin resistance gene. Hence, the plasmid carrying host that is E. coli in this case will not be able to grow in presence of ampicillin anymore if we insert a gene that disrupts the ampicillin resistance. Got it. This is why we always keep the restriction endonuclear sites under, I mean, lying within the, the, the you know, uh, multiple cloning sites and particularly the, the uh, lying within the antibiotic resistance genes like ampicillin resistance or tetracycline resistance. Okay. Now, if we talk about the construction, how we have constructed PBR322, as I mentioned that PBR322 is a synthetic one. Okay. It's a synthetic vector. It's not a naturally occurring vector. So it's manufactured. So how do you manufacture? Generally, what we know is that uh, for manufacturing a vector, what important components that we need, we need to have uh, some important components. For example, we need to have restriction, restriction endonucleases. Okay. Restriction endonuclease. We need origin, site of origin. Okay. So site of origin and restriction sites, these are all very important. So similarly, in this case, the ampicillin resistance gene originally resided on the plasmid RSF2124. Okay. So basically, we gather, we, we get this ampicillin resistance gene from RSF2124, which is a naturally occurring antibiotic resistance plasmid. So in this case, the ampicillin resistance gene that we saw in the PBR322, this is actually taken from another plasmid which is of E. coli origin that is RSF2124. Okay, so you got ampicillin resistance gene from RSF2124. We've got a tetracycline resistance gene from another antibiotic that is anti another, another antibiotic resistant plasmid from another bacteria and that is PSC101 plasmid. So basically it's a hybrid plasmid we are talking about PBR322. So we got ampicillin resistance gene from a plasmid RSF2124. We got tetracycline resistance gene from PSC101. And we got the origin of replication from another plasmid known as PMB1, which is very closely related to colchicine, uh, colicine, sorry, very closely related to colicine producing plasmid or col E1. Doesn't matter. But from PMB1, we got origin of replication. Okay. From PSC101, we got tetracycline resistance gene. From RSF2124, we got ampicillin resistance gene. So from getting all these components from different plasmids, we finally produced PBR322. And there's a different approach to produce that. Basically, the selection of PBR322, the way we produce PBR322 is by the method known as insertional inactivation of an antibiotic resistance gene. So in this case, what happened is that 
For example, this PBR322, which is a recombinant PBR322 molecule right now, that carries an extra piece of DNA in the BAM H1 site. So if it carries an extra piece of DNA in BAM H1 site, which is no longer confer a tetracycline resistance to the host. So what will happen if we insert that DNA by BAM H1? If I go back, I can I can share this. So if we if we uh, say in the tetracycline we have BAM H1 site as well. So if we insert a DNA in the BAM H1 site, it will disrupt the tetracycline resistance gene. So now this vector once inserted to a host, let's say E. coli. So the E. coli with this vector will no longer have the tetracycline resistance gene. Okay, so it will be sensitive to tetracycline like that. So this kind of situation can arise. Okay, that's what we know about it. So the origin we got from separate uh, place, ampicillin resistance, a separate uh, plasmid, tetracycline resistance, a separate plasmid. That is all that importance, that all that matters. So BAM H1, there's a, I mentioned that if we cleave it here, it will disrupt the tetracycline gene. So this is how we actually built uh, and, and gathered information regarding the plasmid and uh, we built this uh, vector. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of P3, uh, PBR322 and the uses of PBR322. Okay, so let's change the color to red again. What are the uses of PBR322 vector? It is widely used as a cloning vector because of the ease of use and the copy number maintenance, the transformation efficiency. Okay, widely used as a model system for study in prokaryotic transcription and translation. That is another thing. Uh, that we can do with PBR322 apart from using it as a cloning vector. Now what are the advantages of PBR322? Of small size, 4.4, near 4.4 kilo bases that enables purification and manipulation of the plasmid very very easy. Second thing is that there are two selectable markers, ampicillin and tetracycline. Okay, Both are present there. So all assays are available there to detect it quite easily. And it can be amplified up to 1000 to 3000 copies per cell. So I mentioned that there are specific region, ROP, that can restrict uh, the number of copies that this vector should be making inside of the host cell. But it can go with 1000 to 3000 copies when protein synthesis is blocked by the application of chloram phenical. So basically, when there is no protein synthesis, but we only want it to replicate, we can do that and it can make 1000 to 3000 copies if we block the protein synthesis by chloramphenicol antibiotic. Disadvantages of PBR322. Okay. PBR322's disadvantages goes like high mobility. It can move to one cell to the other cell uh, via the F pillars. So if the donor cell have the F pillars, let's say this is a donor cell with F pillars, they have this plasmid, they can be quite easily migrated to the recipient cell okay and as a result of this so it may be mixed in the host population so it will be very difficult for us to distinguish the normal host without any recombinant plasmid or a host with a recombinant plasmid so we need to get ready for additional experimentation for additional steps to purify the host with recombinant plasmid that gets a really challenging job and second thing if number of copies like 1000 3000 copies we should not do that until or unless we have some desired uh, outcome of that so that's a big problem limitation in size of the gene of interest of course as the insert size is very small and generally plasmids have this problem all the plasmids have this problem the insert size possible to incorporate will be less and in the small number. So that is only the big problem that it faces. And it's not a very high copy number. It is expected from a good vector. Okay, Not a very high copy number present uh, as it's expected from a good vector. See, I mentioned you that it can receive to the high copy number 1000 to 3000 if we inhibit the protein synthesis with chloramphenicol. But if you don't do that, then the number of copies maintained inside the host is very low. And there is a reason behind it because of the specific region uh, that we've talked about, the ROP region that we talked about, that restrict the number of copies that this vector will uh, produce inside of the host cell. So that's why it is not created in that way that we make huge number of copies. But still that is a disadvantage. We can count it as a disadvantage. And the last thing is that the screening process is time consuming and laborious. Yes, the reason behind the screening process is time consumption is that I mentioned 
that this uh, this plasmid is very small so it can be transferred from one cell to the other from one host to the recipient cell via the conjugation and the transformation efficiency is higher that is a good thing that's also a bad thing because in that case it also can be transferred to the other cells of the same generation or or the horizontal gene transfer mode so by both the way uh, the the plasmid can move to the other cells so it becomes very difficult for a researcher to find out a host cell which is without the recombinant plasmid and the host cell with the recombinant plasmid that becomes laborious so these are the disadvantages of pvr322 but keeping the disadvantages aside pvr322 gives us all the little details everything that we need to uh, insert our target dna which is smaller and clone it uh, and can magnify it okay so that's uh, that's a advantage so that's why pvr322 is advantages vector we can use it as a cloning vector and also for the study of transcription and translation in prokaryotes so that's why it's a good vector to go i believe this video gives you enough information to answer any question from this pvr322 vector in csr net gate icmr iit jam and all this competitive examination all the very best for the examination if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you